Hello and welcome back to the Simple System Tutorial video series. This particular session is going to deal with character creation. And this is one of the areas in particular where the Simple System has really streamlined the whole process of creating a character as well as uh, we've developed these character cards which take the place of the old character sheets. And as you can see, there's uh, a lot less going on here. It's a lot clearer to read. It's a lot easier to find information when you go looking for it. Uh, and uh, we've also done something special in that we've got this special lamination that allows us to actually take a pencil. Let's see if I can find my pencil here. Okay, well, here I have a mechanical pencil. And I can write on this card in any way that I want. Let's say I want to create a character named uh, Rupert. And so you can see there I have Rupert written. Uh, let's say that uh, his profession is going to be a boxer. So there's Rupert the boxer. Uh, but you know what? Let's not call him Rupert. It's kind of a silly name for a boxer. Let's go ahead and call him something more normal, like, uh, I don't know, Cecil. There you go. There, now we have Cecil the Boxer. And, of course, when we're done with Cecil the Boxer, we can just go ahead and erase that and create a new character, any kind that we want. And uh, these cards can be reused uh, indefinitely to create all sorts of characters. Uh, now, let's just go ahead and go through the actual creation of the character. And, again, it can be done really, really quickly. I'm going to demonstrate right now. It's a really straightforward process. And it should allow you and your players to get started playing right away. So the first thing that you'll want to fill out, step one, is all of the uh, biography section. So that would be the name, the profession, the vitals, which is anything that you think is particularly necessary to uh, say about your character and then what are their goals. So in this case, I've got a character we've come up with here. His name is John Smith. John Smith is a plumber, as you can see here. He's six foot tall, fair skinned. Those plumbers, you know, they don't get out much. And he's got brown eyes. And his goals are revenge. So who knows what he's out to avenge, but that's his goal anyway. Uh, we just go ahead and check his sex right here. He's male. And you know what? I think John Smith, that's kind of a, a common name. Let's give him something a little bit more distinctive than John Smith. Let's go ahead and name him Bob Smith. There you go. That's better. Okay, so Bob Smith. Uh, that's it. The biography section is done. Now, uh, skills. As far as skills, in the uh, brief uh, rule book that comes with the simple system, there is a list of skills, a, a very uh, concise list of skills and flaws. That's going to be the next thing that you're going to want to uh, pick for your character. But along with that list... Uh, there is going to be a setting card for each skill that, or flaw that you can choose for your character. Skills, of course, are things that will make your character better at specific types of activities. And flaws are personality quirks or uh, some sort of, um, it could be something from their background that makes their life a little bit more difficult or adds a little bit of character to your character, but qualities that would generally be considered uh, unattractive. So as you can see here, we've already picked a couple skills. You could look through that list or flip through the cards. And this is a flaw card, greedy. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and say, all right, I've picked two skills, agile and good looking, let's say, um, that are going to affect some of my talent. Uh, my attempts for the better, but for flaws, I picked libidinous, which is, 
is a very popular flaw amongst my players for some reason. And let's go ahead and say, okay, I picked two skills. Uh, that means that I can uh, pick two flaws. Actually, it's vice versa. You get to pick the same number of skills as you do flaws. So let's just say that uh, since I have to pick a second flaw, since I've already picked uh, two skills, my second flaw here is going to be greedy. Okay. So I'm libidinous and greedy, Bob Smith. And uh, there's just a short description here of what this quality, this flaw, uh, is, how it affects my, my character. And so this is actually going to go into my, my player hand, and uh, along with any skill cards that I have. So I have always have at the ready, as a player, exactly what my skills and flaws are, as well as my inventory items. And I know what all of these things do and how they affect me. Now, one thing about Simple System is that uh, you are never, ever forced to play your flaws. For example, I'm greedy, uh, a greedy plumber, and I could choose at any time to be very generous, to share what I have with everybody else. There's nothing that's going to really prevent me from doing that as a player. However, it is to my advantage to act or to role play this flaw of greedy. The reason being is that if I do play to this flaw and the GM is happy with my role playing, then he can award me additional hero cards. And these, not only can I use them during the game to influence the story, but I can spend whatever hero cards I have left over at the end of a session as part of my advancement of my character. I can use these to purchase new skills and uh, new powers. So there's definitely advantages to having your flaws. You're never forced to play them, but it does make the game a lot more fun, a lot more interesting, and it can have a, a big impact on how successful your character can be and how fast he can advance. So okay, so I've picked my skills, I've picked my flaws. Next thing would be powers. Not all settings are going to have powers, but some do. Let's say, for example, that uh, the GM wants everybody in this setting to have some sort of superpower. And I'm going to say, okay, my plumber was in a radioactive plumbing accident, and now he has the power of mind control. So here are the rules on mind control. Uh, again, I'll put this in my hand and keep it for easy reference for myself. And I'll just go ahead and write that down here. Mind control is one of my powers. This way... With these things written here, at the end of a play session, you can hand in all your cards to the GM, and then when you get back together, you can quickly rebuild your hand and uh, begin playing again. Inventory. This is really the last step, but I'll go ahead and deal with it now. Uh, inventory. You just basically decide, okay, what would my character logically start with? Uh, discuss it with the GM, and if he gives you the thumbs up or has some suggestions, just go ahead and list whatever is in your inventory right there. Again, there are inventory cards. For example, let's say you have a bulletproof vest, or let's say that you have a, a grappling hook with a rope. These are in your hand, so you know you've got them. Uh, you can write them here. It's not strictly required. But there, there's always going to be some things you're going to have in your inventory that you just won't have cards for. Uh, true story, ran a campaign. And my group of characters crashed, landed in a random jungle. And the first thing one character did was search a random bush in the jungle. And so I told him, being kind of sarcastic, okay, um, you find muck and weeds under the bush. And he says, all right, cool. And he writes muck and weeds in his inventory. And we all kind of, uh, I don't know, leered at him uh, for doing that. But it wasn't five minutes later that some bad guys showed up to investigate the crash. Everybody hid. And he said, okay, I smear myself with muck and weeds. And what do you know? He got himself a bonus to his uh, disguise check. So you never quite know what your players are going to come up with. And, uh, of course, there's complete freedom to write whatever you want there, just like in an old character sheet. Down here at the bottom... Um, as your characters earn experience points or advancement points, we call them, 
uh, they can keep track of them here. And uh, every time they reach a threshold, they're going to earn a couple points they can spend on skills, eliminating flaws if they desire, and upgrading their abilities. Which brings me to the abilities. When you create a character, you begin with four ability points to spend in any of your abilities. And you can see here in the rule book, the different abilities are strength, agility, wisdom, build, resolve, charisma, and intellect. Of course, those describe the various uh, aspects of your character, what he's good at, uh, what he's uh, naturally disposed to excel in, and uh, what he, where he doesn't have much potential for success. So all your abilities begin at zero. So as you can see, I've filled out every column to zero. Only in special cases would you ever begin below zero. And then you have four points to spend. So you can see I've spent a skill point on my strength, on my wisdom, my build, and on my resolve. Um, and then I filled out these columns. Oh, actually, I left out Bill here. So, okay. So now they're filled out to their appropriate level. And I can quickly reference with my resolution deck, okay, what color am I going to be flipping for any of these particular abilities? For my strength, it would be yellow. For my agility, it would be green, and so on. Lastly, after I spent those four abilities, I have here four derived stats. These are my uh, health points, my defense, my power points, and my speed. So you can see just below every derived ability is the formula on how to calculate how many of each you have. So for example, my hit points are my build plus my resolve plus three. So I just go right over here Okay, my build is plus one in the plus one column, plus my resolve is plus one in the plus one column, so that's two plus three, so my total hit points will be five. Next, my defense. That's going to be my agility plus my wisdom. So let's see, nothing in agility or zero, and then plus one in wisdom so my defense is going to be plus one what that means is plus one is equal to fair or yellow so anytime that I've asked to flip my defense I'm actually gonna turn to yellow and flip whoa good good result there oh bad result <laughs> not a very good result there either okay well anyway um, so far not doing too good on my defense but you get the idea now I know what to flip Lastly, well, second to last, my power points. That is my build plus my resolution. So both of those are at plus one, so I would have two power points. Those are spent to activate your special abilities, your powers, and uh, they recharge over time. And then finally, my speed, which all characters begin at five unless they have some sort of skill or other circumstance that uh, changes that to begin with. And that's it. Well, you've created a character. I know that this video has run for close to 15 minutes, uh, but as you've seen, I've kind of rambled on a bit about each section. Uh, really, just to sit down and build a character once you have a concept in mind. It's biography. As you can see, this is very simple. Pick some skills and flaws, some powers. Decide on your inventory spend these points and fill out the derived stats and you really can have characters up and running in less than five minutes especially if it is your first time playing with the simple system or your first time playing with a certain group you may want to ask them to delay picking their skills and flaws until your second play session that way they can kinda get a feeling for how the simple system works, how the card resolution mechanic works. Uh, you won't spend that extra time searching through skills and flaws. You'll get right into the game and 
before the second session, everybody will have a pretty good idea where they want to either help or hinder their character. And uh, again, the, the whole idea behind this, the simple system in general, is to get groups playing quickly, to keep everything simple and straightforward, but never, ever limit player freedom or player choice. Because after all, this is a role-playing game. These cards, if you can tell, they come in colors to match the uh, resolution decks. So again, it's real simple for characters, for players to keep track of of whose is whose, what's what. And uh, it just has a real simple, real attractive, uh, really compact feel, and it feels really good at the table. And uh, these are just fun to play with, I gotta tell you. Okay, thank you very much. And my next tutorial, I'm going to be uh, tackling one of the largest elements, and that is going to be the combat in the simple system. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon.